Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. I'm here in Notion today, and today's video is going to go over how to create a more original aesthetic for your Notion workspace. Now, the reason that I'm making this video is because Notion is so powerful and you can really customize the look and feel of it to match what you're going for and what you like. So it makes it a much more enjoyable experience if you have uh, you know, a workspace that you actually enjoy looking at. So without further ado, let's jump right in. First, I'm gonna go over a tour and then I'm gonna give you guys five tips to improve your Notion workspace. So starting out here on my homepage, you'll see that it's quite simple, quite clean. I like to keep things very like to the point and uh, not too confusing or not too all over the place. So you'll notice that my pages have sort of a continuity to them and a style to them that stays the same throughout but they all have their own unique little differences about them. So uh, I use these GIFs for cover photos and I tend to use the same black text for a lot of black and gray text for a lot of these pages. So if I start clicking through my pages, you'll see that like on the tutorials and SOPs page, it's a GIF, but it's a little bit different. The notes page, it's again, it's a GIF, but it's a little bit different. Um, but we have the same sort of, uh, you know, style throughout. So now I wanna go over how this workspace kind of has that continuity to it and how it looks so nice. Uh, so let's just jump right in with the first tip, which is use custom icons instead of emojis whenever possible for your pages. So you'll notice that I have this custom icon created here. Uh, this is just a picture of my face that an independent designer created. I will actually leave a link to him in the description so definitely check that out. Uh, he did a great job, I think, of taking a portrait of me and turning it into my homepage icon. And it matches the sort of notion feel that a lot of people like to go for. Um, you'll also notice that, hey, I, you know, I did use some emojis here for the uh, to-do lists. Um, but a lot of these icons for my main pages are custom icons that I've downloaded or that um, you know, I've purchased from stock websites or whatever it might be. So I highly recommend just getting your own icons. You can either create these in Photoshop or Canva, or you can even go ahead and like download them from, you know, free resources. If you're not going to be using your notion workspace for anything paid, or you can even download like commercial versions of these so that you can use them for paid like templates and stuff like that, if that's your style. But that's one of the first tips that I would highly recommend is just to get a nice icon that has the same sort of style to it. But as you can see, we still have the flexibility of being able to change colors, but all these icons look good together because it's the same type of art style that we're going for here. Uh, the homepage is a little bit different, but that's the one exception I would say. And I've also pulled in like some actual little YouTube icons for anything that's related to making videos. So like I made this synced blocks video for Notion. I actually should check that off because that's finished. Um, so, you know, you'll, you'll kind of see these throughout uh, and I've kind of pulled those from other resources. So now on to the next tip. My next tip is to use cover photos and stick to a theme. So you'll notice with my workspace that I've used a lot of GIFs and I just really like the way that these look. They kind of give me a peaceful vibe. They give me a sense of kind of fun and playfulness. So that's kind of why I use these GIFs in the background. And if you go over to like my tutorials and SOPs page, you'll see that I've got this beautiful one here. And you know, none of the credit goes to me for these. I'm not going to take credit for this. And this is only for educational purposes that I'm using these in this video. Uh, I don't sell these or anything like that because I don't own any of these. So if you go over to Giphy, uh, it's a website where you can actually find some really great gifts. Uh, let's just actually take a look at that website right now. And you know, for personal use, they work great. If you just kind of look for a similar style throughout, you'll notice that these probably aren't like all the same artists. Um, they're probably an array of artists that I've, that I've found that I like but they all have that similar sort of style to them. And it really just gives the workspace a much more enjoyable feel, if you ask me. All right, so this is Giphy.com. And if you wanna come check it out, one of the recommendations that I have for looking for different cover photos to upload is literally just clicking right here. And 
then you basically just type in whatever you want. So if you wanted to find, uh, you know, 8-bit or like 16-bit, like the ones that I have, you just type in like 8-bit backgrounds. And they have lots of great little backgrounds that you can search through. If you find one that you kind of like, like let's say you like the space one, if you click on it, it's going to show you a bunch of similar ones. So that's usually what I like to do to find, you know, similar backgrounds that I can use that go well together. And then once I find a style, I'll download a bunch of these and add them to a folder on my computer. And from there you can kind of, you know, just pull in different ideas and keep a consistent theme going. Another great site for those of you who don't like GIFs is Unsplash. So Unsplash puts out some great work. There's lots of photographers that upload their work here. And it's a, well, as it says here, the internet's source of freely usable images powered by creators everywhere. So you can literally type in a theme that you like here or a color. Let's just say like we wanted to go for a yellow. We could literally just type in yellow and we're going to get tons of different yellows. So if you wanted to go by color, you could do it by color. You could do it by a certain style. Like let's say we want to go for like a clean look. I could type in clean and you know, it is going to pull up things like this, but it will also pull up like that white background, that kind of minimalist look. So you can kind of sift through these and find similar pictures that really are, you know, going to fit into your style. You could even type in like nature or leaves. That might be a cool style. I think that would actually look really nice on Notion if you just did a bunch of different types of plants and stuff like that. The next tip is really more of a principle that I follow when I'm creating my workspace rather than a, a tangible tip. But I think that this really helps to improve your workspace overall. And that is to have consistency throughout your Notion workspace and continuity across everything. So you'll see what I mean when I say that you know, consistency matters because if you look at this, you almost don't even notice when I'm switching pages here because the consistency in the template that I'm using is so on point. So I've actually created this uh, menu here that you can add pages with. So when I hit add new page, it just pulls in pages that are very uh, similar. And you know, when I go to my new page here, I can actually see uh, really well automatically that, you know, I'm using the similar text and the similar positioning. I've got just two colors that I'm using, the black and the gray. Uh, I wouldn't recommend, you know, changing your coloring across all the pages unless you have an eye for design and you understand how to use a lot of colors well together. But if you're a beginner and you wanna have continuity across all your pages, I recommend just keeping things extremely simple and keeping the same format for your pages. And I found that this helps out a ton. Hey guys, one second before you continue watching this video, please remember to drop a quick like. It helps to motivate us to make more videos just like this one. And if you're enjoying this, that's one of the best ways that you can give us a quick thank you. It takes less than a second, so we'd really appreciate it. Now back to the video. This kind of leads into our next tip, which is to keep the same font across everything and pick a font that inspires you. So when you uh, go into Notion from the start, this isn't a super obvious feature that they have, but you can actually change the font in Notion. So if I click up here in the corner, I can change it to a serif or I can even change it to a mono or a default. I tend to think that the default looks the best, but if you wanted to, you could change it to mono or you could change it to serif and that changes it by the page. So as you can see, my home page is serif now, but I would have to go into the tutorials and SOPs page and change that to serif as well. And I think it's best if you keep it consistent across everything, but you should definitely use fonts if you like the way that one font looks over another font. I found that the default is the most readable, but serif and mono work well as well. And you can change this from small text to larger text. If you're somebody that you know likes to have larger text, I recommend just keeping small text off, but you know, small text really does help a ton. Uh, for me to add more in and I tend to be someone who likes to you know Prioritize adding more to my pages and more complexity over being able to read them because I have pretty good vision but uh, you know, sometimes the the larger look just pulls off a much better look overall anyways um, It kind of has a better aesthetic to it. So that's kind of a preference thing but I definitely recommend paying attention to your type and Making sure that it's similar across all pages 
For the fifth and final tip, I wanna delve a bit more into color and talk about how to use color creatively to improve your workspace in Notion. Now, one of the great ways that you can change colors in Notion is by switching between dark mode and light mode. If you're on a Mac, you can also sync this up. So I'm gonna open up my settings panel up here and we're gonna go into the appearance area. And you can switch right here from light to dark. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also switch to using the system settings and that's going to actually toggle it based on the time of day or based on what your system is set to. So if you have your MacBook or your Mac or whatever it may be set to a light mode, then you will have it on light mode but there's also a feature on there where you can have it change based on the time of day. So your notion might be switching um, as it gets later at night, you'd have dark mode on and as it gets you know closer to daytime, you'll have it switch to light mode, which is kind of cool. I like to stay on light mode, but you can also switch over to dark mode if you'd like to, and that can really uh, spice up the aesthetic as well. I also recommend if you do want to use color that you use it wisely. And I'm going to tell you how I think it's best to use color. So if you're going to use a lot of colors in your text and you wanna color code a lot of that stuff, then I recommend uh, keeping your cover photos and your icons simple, okay? The reason that I just stick with the black and gray and white theme here for the most part is because the cover photos are quite um, colorful in a lot of ways. If I switch between these, you'll see that they kind of, they, they rotate through lots of colors. You know, we've got pinks and, you know, kind of this green. And then over here, we've got like this blue color. And then, you know, on the home page, we come back to the home page and it's got these brighter greens and reds. So the colors are kind of all over the place with my cover photo. But if you chose a simple cover photo, kind of stuck to like some whites, grays, very like strict colors on that, uh, you could add some splashes of color into your page, right? So you could add, like, let's say here, a uh, orange, right? So like if I if I did orange and yellows for all of my, well, actually I have to switch this to yellow, which I don't think yellow is very readable on this white. So I'd probably want to switch over to a dark mode, right? The only reason that this looks out of place right now, in my opinion, is because the cover photo is tons of different colors and the icons are all different colors. So it looks super weird. This icon doesn't even fit in with this dark background. So that's the problem with using colored text in this case. But if I chose a blank, like white, super simple, minimalist kind of background, and then I just chose like white and gray icons, throughout, then this would tend to look pretty good. Um, but you definitely want to be careful with your colors and make sure that they kind of match uh, well together and they complement each other rather than clash. And if you have a good eye for design, you probably already understand this, but this is something that's hard to teach and it's something that you can only figure out through practice in my opinion. I've designed websites for many years and I've also been a video editor and I've done some graphic design for quite a few years. So I believe that I don't have the best eye for design, but I understand spacing and fonts and colors a little bit better than the average person. So definitely do some research into, you know, what makes something look good uh, artistically. Another tip to really improve your Notion aesthetic overall is to use the Notion Enhancer. I did a full tutorial on how to install and use the Notion Enhancer, and it basically is a plugin that you can get over top of Notion. You can install it on your computer, and it allows you to bring in all kinds of different colored backgrounds, different fonts, different types of text, um, different modules that you normally can't use in Notion. So definitely check that out if you wanna take it to the next level. I do find that the Notion Enhancer can be a bit unstable at times and it's not the perfect fit for everyone because you know you do have to install it and it can be a bit tedious to update it and whatnot. But if you want to really take your Notion aesthetic to the next level and make your Notion completely unique, uh, that can definitely do just that. So definitely take a look at that video. I will have it linked up in one of these corners. With all that said, I hope that you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. It helps out the channel a ton. That's one of the biggest things that has helped our channel grow. It's not really the subscribers, not necessarily uh, shares or comments, but the likes are what really kind of elevate the videos that we found are doing well. 
Um, you know, if you want to comment, that's definitely appreciated as well. You can leave some feedback below and we love to hear your feedback. It's super helpful. It helps us make better videos in the future. So do so. And if you want to subscribe, make sure you do hit the bell because that will give you those reminders when we come out with a new video related to Notion or some other type of software or productivity in general. Those are some of the topics that we cover on this channel. And if you want to share this with a friend, by all means, that helps as well. I hope that this video helped you so much and we'll see you guys in the next one.